What's going on guys? Welcome back. Holmes by Conjun here, your Dallas trusted realtor. Uh, we're back with Nate today. We're going to be talking some very important questions. And some of those questions that you guys have reached out to me and want to answer on are those who are self-employed, those are investors, whomever it may be. Those are, aren't doing the typical, say, job that people are doing. Um, they don't go into office, whatever. They're making money from, say, social media, such as YouTube, Instagram, all those platforms that we're kind of used to nowadays. How do these people purchase a home? What are their process? Is it the same process as you purchase mm -hmm. an FHA? Is it gonna be the same documentation? So we're back again with Nate. Mm -hmm. Nate is gonna go ahead and give us several good, useful uh, information and nuggets that you can use. And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, Holmes by Conjun here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to yeah. Nate and uh, you know, have him answer some of the questions. So pertaining to what I just said, yeah. you know, what, what exactly can those who are, say, videographer, those who are self-employed, you know, people are making money not the usual ways that we're used to seeing. Sure. What did the loan process look for those people? Sure, and I, I wouldn't say they're almost unusual ways, they're just kind of newer ways. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it still goes on, but kind of back before, you know, you have people who run their own business, like a small plumber, or, you know, an AC company, or somebody that, you know, runs their own thing, or an insurance broker, or even a realtor, mm -hmm. right? So a realtor, they're a realtor self-employed. So. And as we come into you know kind of the new age with millennials and social media and everything, you have Instagram bloggers, uh, you have videographers, um, you have people making money from TikTok. So just a bunch of different ways that aren't you know hey here's a W two, here's a pay stub, here's a set salary, because those people don't get those. You know it's kind of more like an artistry in a sense. Um, but basically, so all those people are going to be considered what's called self-employed, and when you are self-employed. Like I said, you don't have that salary or those pay stubs to go after, go on. So we have to go off tax returns. So one of the biggest things when being self-employed is filing your tax returns. Okay. So typically, you know, if you if you're just starting off, we need at least two years. Okay, two years of income because we got to average it. Now, what we run into sometimes because we look at it the same way for qualifying, but maybe even a little bit deeper. Now, when you're self-employed, you you may write your car off. Right? Or the business may pay for your car. Um, the business, you know, you may write off your house, but essentially you may go from making really a hundred grand to where if you write too many things off, not a bad thing, means you got a good CPA, you may only show thirty or forty thousand dollars that we can qualify you off of for income. So that's the second thing. And I'm not telling anybody to write things off, but you need to be cognizant that if you want to go in and get pre-approved for a house those most recent two years you don't want to write as much off so that because you want your income to be as high as possible on paper mm. make sense yeah and one of the other thing too that you touched base on that mm -hmm. i didn't know because for me as a realtor mm -hmm. um it's been i want to you know purchase several right. homes and stuff i'm not really too inept with the whole sure. process so mm -hmm. that's kind of good that you you know touch on that when it comes to you know, them keeping a book of records of their finances mm -hmm. and everything else. What is the key thing that you're looking at when it do provide you with those documentation uh, that shows, hey, is it repetitive deposits of mm -hmm. money? Um, is there a long stream of sure. bank statement? You know, what, what does that entail exactly? So we'll knock on this two different ways. Um, when we're working with someone that's self-employed, they're still getting the same conventional FHA. We're not sticking them in the, hey, here's your box, you know, here's a strange loan program just for you. It's going, you're going with, you know, conventional FHA, which everyone else does, the standard mortgage. What we look at, we don't, we'll look at the bank statements, but we don't necessarily look, we, we look more at the tax returns rather than the bank statements because the tax returns are going to tell all. So there, there's different, I don't want to get too deep into it because believe it or not, a lot of people don't know how their business is set up. They just kind of hand, hand it over to a professional and say, hey, here's my money, here's how I make it, get my taxes done, mm -hmm. right? So it comes back to those tax returns. We look what's being written off, and really there's gonna be a net line at some point on there, and we take that and we work backwards because there are some things we can add back in, mileage, depreciation, you know, there's worksheets we go off of. So really the most important thing is the tax returns. Tax returns. Get yes. everything to your CPA. I mean, right now it's September of 2021. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But no, September of 2021, I have an insurance agent I'm trying to get him pre or trying to get him qualified for a refinance. He has not filed his 2020 nor his 2019 taxes. Wow. So we are having to get him to file his 2019, file his 2020, catch back up. 
but it's not a bad scenario that he hasn't done that because now I can say don't write a lot off. Oh. Save it until you know after we get you in the home. Then you know the next following years you can write off. Got it. So basically, you know, in my line of work, we write off a lot, uh, and you know, by writing off a lot, yes, you get to retain a lot of your funds, right. but it does hinder you. So that's what Nate is kind of saying. There will be a hindrance, and please correct, correct me if I'm wrong, that if you write off a large amount, that may affect what you're going to be, you know, overly qualified for. Because if you're saying you make a hundred. And you're writing off eighty thousand, and you're only showing twenty. Am I right? In a perfect kind of maybe layman's way to put it, say you know I'm a W two employee, you're not. You're ten ninety nine. You're self employed. So say we both make a hundred thousand dollars. I cannot write off any business expenses, any meals, my car, none of that because I'm a W two salaried employee. On your in your circumstance, you can write off your car, your meals. Um, driving, entertainment, I mean really as much as your CPA can do within the tax code, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you may get that down to $50,000, right? That's what we have to go off of for your income now instead of the hundred. Whereas for me, I pay all those expenses out of pocket. I don't, they don't go towards lowering my taxable income. Mm -hmm. I get to go off the hundred thousand dollars. So that's the biggest difference right there. Now, there are a lot of people who write off a lot in their tax returns. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Talk to your tax advisor. But there are programs for those individuals that do that. So say you do make your 100K and you write it off to where it looks like you only make 20, right? You're saving a lot of money on taxes, but your chances of qualifying for a house are pretty slim. There's what's called a bank statement program out there. They typically require more down, usually at least 20%, and they do have a little bit of higher interest rate. I'm doing one right now, the interest rate's about a 4%, where prime right now is about a three. Um, We look at, we get 12 months of the business bank statements, or personal if there's no business statements, and then we look at the cash flow coming in from, you know, from their line of work, whatever that may be. We use that for the income, we qualify them, and we get them in the home. Wow. So, there is some trade-offs, and some people really like this program. There's a lot of people who own multiple businesses, you know, buy a million, two million dollar houses that go with this program because it's easy. They don't have to go through all their taxes. They don't have to get everything over. They can write off what they want to write. Makes it a little bit simpler. Or you have some people who, again, write everything off to where it looks like they're making, you know, only a thousand bucks a month, five hundred dollars a month that we can put them in the bank statement program, get them qualified. Hmm. See, I didn't even know that. I mean, bank statement program. That, was that something that was just recently? No, they've, they've kind of been around. Okay. You know, we got one recently within the past year, and they're, they're great programs. Mm-hmm. I've used them before in the past. My company just recently got an outlet for it, and we've been using it a lot. You guys, you don't understand. I mean, me as a realtor, Nate is sharing some very important information here. And, uh, I mean, from, you know, credit score that we spoke about last time to the processing for those who are self-employed, if you're a videographer, if you're making stuff, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, knowledge is power and that's why we do these videos because we want to educate you guys.